In this video, I'm going to show you around the customer and sales side of accounting in BrightPearl. We're going to see how to raise sales order invoices, how to enter invoices from another system, how to see what customers owe you, how to take payments and deposits for orders, how to allocate payments against one or more invoices, how to send statements, and then finally, how to raise a credit note and allocate it against a sales invoice. First of all, let's create an invoice for some products. All product and service invoices come from sales orders. When you invoice an order, an accounting journal is created based on the order line items, and the order is also locked for further editing. Here we've got an order for two items with different account codes. The order total is $200. It's set to the wholesale channel. All we need to do is click the invoice button. If the customer has an email address, they can be sent a PDF at this point. You can also send a copy later. When you invoice a sale, it's given an automatic reference and the status is updated to completed or whatever you have set in your sales settings. Let's have a look at the general ledger to see what's happened. There's a journal of type SI, which means sales invoice. It's assigned to the customer has the order ID and has been given the automatic invoice reference. The two products have been added as separate journal rows with the relevant account code. For simplicity's sake, we don't have any tax. The $200 has been put on the 1100 accounts receivable or age debtors code, which will show as an asset on the balance sheet. It means that the customer owes us money. Clicking the ID on the left lets us drill down into the detail where we can see that the revenue lines have been assigned the wholesale channel. This lets us filter the income statement, profit and loss, and other accounting reports. Invoices can be created one at a time from the order screen, like we just saw, in batch from the sales list, or using the BrightPearl automation app. Now let's say that you've got invoices in a separate system that you want to enter into BrightPearl. If you're not using products, which would need shipping, then you don't need an order. You can use the quick invoice screen. Quick invoices can't be printed or emailed and you can't add products or services, so most of the time you'll use a sales order. From the customers menu, choose Quick Invoice. Enter all details in here and submit. Let's put an invoice in for $50, one that we raised in our previous accounting software. And it's a good idea to put the reference in here so you can find it later. It'll create an SI journal just like invoicing an order. We've now raised two invoices for the customer, totaling $250. To see what customers owe you, visit the Customers, Accounts Receivable or Age Debtors screen. And here's our customer. By default, this shows the base currency value of all of your invoices. If you're invoicing in multiple currencies, you can apply a filter. If you want to see each individual outstanding invoice, hit the Detailed checkbox. There are plenty of other filters too, including the ability to choose a date and see what customers owed you at a point in the past. We can tag customers, send customers an email, add a note, send a statement, and I'll show you how to send statements later in this video. Now we'll see how to take payments for orders. We'll go back to the order and take part payment of $100. When you're in the order, click the Take Payment button. Choose a payment method. Enter a reference and the amount. When you create the payment, a sales receipt journal is created and the order is marked as part paid. Clicking View Payments takes you to the order payment list for this order. Here's what the general ledger looks like now. We've got the first invoice for $200, the quick invoice for $50 and then a $100 part payment against the first order. Because the order has already been invoiced, the SR or the sales receipt journal has the order's invoice reference. It doesn't matter whether you take payment before or after invoicing. I'll show you how to take deposits and prepayments later in the video. If you choose a payment method that's connected to a gateway, such as Authorize.net or SagePay, then when you click to take payment, you'll be presented with a screen where you can take card details. If the card is authorized, then a sales receipt journal will be created as normal. The customer still owes us $100 from the first order and also the $50 invoice we entered as a quick invoice. Now I'll show you how to allocate a single payment against both of these invoices. This needs to be done from the accounting area. Click the Allocate Payment link 
whenever you see an accounting mini tab for a customer, or from the accounts receivable or age debtors screen. At the top is the order invoice which we part paid, and the unpaid quick invoice which is not linked to an order. All we need to do is click pay by both of these lines to allocate a payment of $150. You just need to choose a bank account, enter a reference and the date it was paid. You don't have to pay invoices in full. Let's leave 10 out of the $50 unpaid, which will balance with a sales credit later. Now we want to send a statement. If it's just for one customer, use the send statement link in any accounting mini tab. There are two statement types, outstanding transactions only, or all transactions between two dates. If your customer has balances in multiple currencies, you'll need to produce a separate statement for each currency. To send statements to multiple customers, use the accounts receivable or age debtors screen. Statements can be emailed or printed. You can configure the look and feel of your statements using templates and even have different statements for different customers, channels or for different stages in the debt collection cycle. So far we've seen how to take payment against an invoice, but what if a customer prepays before you invoice, which is typical in an e-commerce scenario? No problem. An order payment is created in the normal way, either by clicking the Take Payment button on the order or by downloading a paid order from an online sales channel. Here's an order that's been paid, but we can see that it's not yet been invoiced. The general ledger shows the sales receipt journal with the order ID. A provisional invoice reference has been set. Let's now invoice the order. The automatically generated invoice reference is shown on the order and has also been updated on the sales receipt. Just like sales invoices come from sales orders or the quick invoice screen, Sales credits come from credit orders or the quick credit screen. Let's create one to cancel out the $10 remaining debt for our demo customer. If you're just wanting to cancel a balance, use the customer's quick credit screen. If you're taking refunded items back from a customer, if you need to perform a refund or produce any documents, then use a credit order. Generally, in most situations, a credit order is better as it gives you more options. From the sales menu, Click to create a new credit, use the orders mini tab, or you can select rows from a sales order and clone to sales credit. A new credit order is created on the status you've set in your sales settings. Just like invoicing sales orders, to post the credit accounting and to lock the order, hit the green button at the top right. An SC journal will be created. The payment allocation screen for this customer now shows the outstanding $10 from the original invoice and also the $10 credit. All we need to do is click pay on both lines. There's no payment amount, so we don't need a bank account. And that's the customer debt all cleared down. To view all financial information from this contact, just go to financial history. And last but not least, I'll show you how to resend invoices when customers need them. Every time you invoice an order, whether you send it to the customer or not, you'll get a PDF on the Notes and Payment History tab. You can download this and attach it to your own email, or if you go into the Contact, from the Files tab, all you need to do is tick to send the email. And that takes us to the end of the video about accounting for sales and customers.